الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء المرسلين مولانا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه ومن سبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين أما بعد Dear respected brothers, sisters, ulamai karam, scholars, George, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. You know, after the attacks took place on Gaza, I gave a talk in Central Masjid and I predicted something which I believe to a degree has come to pass. And I said that peering through the carnage, destruction and the massacre, I believe that there is a potential of khair, good coming out of this. As Allah says in the Quran, Asa an takrahu shay'an wa huwa khayrul lakum. It is a possibility that you dislike something, but there is good in it for you. And the fact that you have all gathered here is a testimony to the fact that five months after the bombardment, we still remember Gaza. Normally when BBC forgets it, we forget it. But you being here is a testimony to the fact that we haven't forgotten the Palestinian cause. And reality is that throughout my practicing life, I have never seen the Muslim community so galvanized regarding an issue as they were galvanized regarding the issue of Gaza. And our personal experience is a testimony to this. When the Viva Palestinian Initiative was announced, the cut-off date was Saturday, and because we're Muslims and true to form, we decided to go on Sunday. Sunday evening we decided to go. Monday we got an extension. We went to a brother. We only wanted two vehicles. That's all we wanted. The first brother we went to, he gave us two vehicles. By 12 o'clock afternoon, we had three vehicles. And then the Jamiat Ulama Britannia got on board and some other organizations by the cut-off date, we had nine vehicles. We had more vehicles than we had drivers. By the time we were about to leave, the 14th of February, Alhamdulillah, we had enough pledges to buy another 30 vehicles. Another 30 vehicles. As you know, we gathered at Hyde Park Corner. We left from Hyde Park Corner to Ramsgate. From Ramsgate we caught a ferry to Ostend which is in Belgium and from Ostend we were to drive down to Bordeaux which is the south of France. We began to drive, we had nine vehicles. When we began to drive we reached near Paris and one of the vehicles broke down. So because I was in charge of that group we towed that vehicle into Paris. And we were directed to a masjid. We didn't know these brothers in this masjid. And I want to mention this because it has deep relevance to the Muslim situation. These brothers didn't know us. But wallahi, they took us in with open arms. They welcomed us. They made us feel comfortable. They made us feel that we were doing them the favor by staying there. You know, they didn't ask us about our aqidah. They didn't ask us about the fiqh that we followed, or the length of our beard, or where we actually came from. Because these were brothers, you know, who followed a different fiqh. They had short beards. We were Asian, they were Arabs. But to them, the overriding thing was that we were Muslims. And you contrast that to our situation. You know, we, we thank the masjid here for hosting this. But this event was offered to another masjid. And they said, you know, Gaza is not a religious issue. It's a political issue. Subhanallah, when did the blood of believers become a non-religious issue? Have we forgotten the word of the Prophet sallallahu when he said, Muslimin." 
the destruction of the entire dunya is lighter in the eyes of Allah than the murder of one believer? Have we forgot when the Prophet ﷺ was doing tawaf around the Kaaba and he turned towards the Kaaba and he said, Indeed, O Kaaba, you are holy in the eyes of Allah. But the blood of one believer is more holier than you. Since when did Palestine become a non-religious issue? Wasn't this our first Qibla? Wasn't it the mirage of the Prophet Wasn't it the place which Allah says that Allah put barakah in it? Wasn't it the place which is known as Ardul Muqaddasa, the holy lands? And it's not a religious issue? You know, other masjids, amazing. They were stopping the brothers from handing out leaflets, not on the masjid premises, on the public footpath outside the masjid. If you don't have the courage to speak about it, why are you stopping other people from speaking about it? And these brothers, they took us in. And it was amazing the way they, wallahi, they treated us. That they fed us, they made us feel comfortable. We woke up for Fajr. They fed us again, you know, three course breakfast. We took a nap. We woke up, they fed us again. And all this time they were repairing our vehicle and they insisted that we do not pay a penny. And by their time, it was, you know, the vehicle was fixed and we took ijaza and they were insisting that we stay for lunch and they had made provisions for supper. And we said, we have to, you know, we have to meet up with the convoy. From there, we went to a takeaway. This brother didn't know, was an Arab brother. He heard that we were going to Gaza. Wallahi, the brother emptied his till and he gave us everything that he had. From Paris, we had to drive down to Madrid. The convoy had reached Madrid now. For the next 19 and a half hours, we drove solid. We only stopped for Salah and to fuel up. 8 o'clock in the morning, we reached Madrid. We slept for two hours. We woke up at 10 o'clock. There was a rally. We had lunch. And then we set out again to a place called Tarifa, which is the southern tip of Spain. It's named after a Muslim actually. 15 hours it took us to reach Tarifa. About 11 o'clock we caught the ferry to Tangiers. About 3 or 4 o'clock in the afternoon, they cleared us from the port. When they cleared us to the port, we went through the Tangiers town center. Wallah, it was amazing. The entire town center stopped. The entire town center stopped. And there was brothers saying, Takbir Allah Akbar. There were others showing the victory sign. Some was showing the shahada sign, some waving at us. And I remember brother Tahir who just read the nasheed. He said, if we had traveled all the way from Britain just to see this, the love and the affection, it would have been enough. It would have sufficed. And then we were taken to a hotel. We were fed. There was plenty of delegates there. They were taking snaps. You know, it was a PR stunt. Then from there, from... Tangiers, we were told that we are going to go to Fez, which is really a three hour drive. This three hour drive ended up being a nine hour drive. For some reason, the Moroccan authorities didn't want anybody to see us. Maybe it was because they thought people coming from Britain would be, you know, lighter in complexion. And they got a shock when 80% of the convoy were Muslim and 50% of them had big beards. Or maybe they were ashamed. Maybe they were ashamed that people had left the affluent West, the vast majority of them non-Arabs and even non-Muslims for a cause for the Arabs in Gaza. Why the Arab leaders in the Muslim world said nothing. Maybe this was the reason. 